YouTube! Welcome to a most glorious Saturday morning. I'm just heading out Fish Hill, aka Widowmakers, uh, heading out into the Cotswolds, uh, doing a little bit more treasure hunting, maybe a bit of green lane if we can find some. So just a nice ride out because it's a lovely day out here. It makes a change. Since I last rode the Himalayan, I've done some upgrades, so I've added a new rear hugger because uh, I was fed up with the back shop until we're getting full of mud, so that's a nice addition. Uh, some nice adjustable levers, because uh, I found the reach on the original ones a little bit much for my hands, so these with a little bit more of a sweep back, which make my life a bit easier. What else did I do? I added a oil temperature gauge. I don't know if that's any use, but it looks nice. Oh, it's really clear today. Beautiful. Oh, what else did I add? Oh, a shorter side stand. Oh my goodness me. If you already own a Himalayan, you know the issues with the side stand being way too long. Especially being out on the trails. So, yeah, all the parts came from Hitchcock's, uh, delivered pretty much overnight. And what I'd say was a pain to fit was the rear hugger, because you've got to take the back wheel out to get in there. And by heck, what an absolute game it is to get the wheel alignment straight on these. What hadn't helped is from the, whether it's a factory or whatever, they added some punch marks on the markers on the sliders, which were different, were <laughs> different markers. So there was me lining it all up on the punch marks, and it turned out they were not in the same place. So I couldn't figure out why my back wheel was looking wonky, and I faffed and I fudged, and I was in the garage till half seven last night. And then I realised, I thought, I don't think those markers are in the right place, in the same place. And uh, so back wheel back out, blah 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 blah. Um, got all the gear on the workbench, and there it was, clear as day. The markers were in a different place to each other. So no wonder I couldn't line it up on those. Oh my goodness! Anyway, all sorted now. I was absolutely wrecked last night. So uh, not drunk, um, tired. Um, so I did the alignment on the wheel this morning before I headed out. So I'm a little bit late out today. I don't know how far we'll get today. Uh, like I say, it's a bit late in the day, it's just after one o'clock. Uh, see what we find. So here we are at the Wellington Aviation Museum. So part of this treasure hunt is we have to take our photo outside wherever we are. So I'm just going to do that now. I can't see anything because the sun's in my eyes. So there we go. There's my photos done with my little wristband to prove I've been here. And that gets me a point. So points do actually win prizes, believe it or not. Uh, so for 10 points you get a patch and then for 20 points you get uh, i think it's just editing to a prize draw for next year so yeah sounds kind of cool anyway right on to the next place so we just ran into Borton on the water again at the tourist hot spot in the cotswolds very very pretty and I believe that I'm looking for a, a maze of some description. Just at the point where my sat nav decides to go completely wonky, it's lost its way. But anyway, well, welcome to Borton on the Water. You can see it's really busy. Uh, a lot of bikes like to come here. Uh, some nice chippies, lots of shops, some good ice cream. Of 
incredibly busy. Busy. The sun has brought the world out by the look of it. I don't know if it's warm enough for picnics just yet, but they seem to think it is. That's cool. I think Bolton on the water is officially jam-packed. <laughs> it's not my idea of hell. I'll go there in the winter and there's not a soul. It's lovely. I don't know why it takes the sunshine for people to come out. Just put a jumper on and wrap up. <laughs> See it when it's quiet. It's far nicer. It looks to me like the maze is somewhere around here. The dragonfly maze, I can see it from here, it's just up there. So I am going to shoot off, go and get the picture. People will probably stare and point and wonder what on earth I'm doing. Uh, but, well, to hell with them. Right, I'll be back. So that was the dragonfly maze. Very reasonable to get in, it was like £4.50. Uh, which in this day and age isn't a fat lot of money. So, back through Busy Borton. Uh, there's quite a lot to see and do here. There's like the Model Village, there's Birdland, there's, there's obviously the maze, there's the food places. So, uh, no wonder it gets so busy. It's just uh, bit too peoply for my liking today <laughs> so let's get out as quick as we can uh, next stop is Kemble Airfield uh, I think there's two places there uh, to photograph uh, one aircraft and the airfield itself there's a nice cafe there so I may well stop for a little bite to eat as well if they're still open by the time I get there uh, it's just two o'clock now, so we'll see how the time goes. And from there, I'll decide whether or not I go down the old Fuss Way or uh, go on the road down towards Wiltshire. Um, see how I feel when I get there. Anyway, that was Borton on their water. There we go, we're at Cotswold Airport, uh, site of uh, Aviate, which is a really lovely cafe. I'll nip there and see if we can get a bit of lunch. And uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to do a couple of picture rolls. Oh, it's not in that bag. Where's my phone? How cool is this? Riding into the airfield. Uh, no sign of the aeroplane yet I'm looking for. Let's keep looking. So Cotswold Airport is Kemble Airfield and it's where all the big planes come to die. I think it's like a breaker's yard. Uh, could just see some over there. Uh, it's also a live airfield. Oh, <laughs> look at that jumbo jet! <laughs> How cool is that? You can see the uh, cafe is really busy, so I'm probably not going to bother because I want to keep moving today and uh, and just ride rather than hang about for now waiting for food. But uh, as you can see, you know, it's a really interesting place to sit, watch the aircraft come and go.
Oh, luckily I bought some snacks, so I'm going to uh, sit and have a snack here under the big old jumbo jet. Yeah, a nice place to uh, sit and have a bite to eat. So that's it, a little stop off at Campbell Airfield, Gloucestershire Airport. Um, I've taken the decision, because it's quite late in the day, that I'm going to go and do the old fuss way. Uh, I really want to do it, I haven't done any green laning for ages. Uh, just got the urge to get a little bit muddy. <laughs> so I'm just going to head to the beginning of the trail now. So here we are, right on the beginning of the, well it's not quite the beginning, uh, the beginning of the old fast ways over some fields and it's kind of rutted and not very nice, so I tend to miss out the very first bit from the airfield and uh, I'm just getting uh, straight onto this nice surface. Uh, it's going to be, I just love this trail. It's dried out a lot since I was last here. This was all really muddy and horrible. So it's nice to see it and it's starting to go green because it was winter last time I was down here and it was all bare and horrible. But now there's like bluebells and the leaves are coming on the trees. Ah, I needed this today. Happy days. So they're just coming down to the first water crossing. Now, last time this was so flooded, I had to go and pre-walk it and pick a way through because even the route to the bridge was uh, completely overwhelmed with water. Um, this time I don't think it will be too bad, but I'm still not going to ride through the water because I love this bike and I don't want him to drown, <laughs> basically. So, looks like people are making the most of the water. A few cars down here. It is nice, easy access. Hiya, alright. <coughs> so, yeah, last time I uh, looked back on the other videos. Oh, we're going to get attacked by dogs as well. Come on, <laughs> Sorry. Go. Go. Come on, there we go. Let's let those dogs through. <laughs> It's a beautiful place. Not quite as flooded as last time. This place, this bit here was completely impassable. So uh, yeah, the water's gone down a lot. It's good. So this next section is the bit that's uh, only open to motorcycles. Uh, They've made the gates wide enough so you're on something bigger, like a GS or whatever, you're still going to get through. Uh, so it's all good. Um, I don't know why it's close to four wheels. Um, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, another nice section of the trail. Hey, it's nice and quiet today. I've come across a couple of dog walkers. One bike, a few people, but uh, nothing too bad. Now, last time I came down here, the water uh, was flowing down here. It was awful. Um, and there was a right old squag at the bottom. But I'm guessing today it's not going to be as bad. It's really dried out. It's lovely. And it leads us down to the second bridge. 
scrog, of course, being the technical term for a jig in little bits of mud. Oh, you can even go round it. <laughs> oh, trail riding and no mud, how lovely. You can see how bad it's been. But, uh, I've always meant to stop in, read this sign. So, a small early Roman town that straddled the Foss Way. Uh, Eastern Grey. So that's pretty cool. Again, the river's gone right down since last time. Uh, you know, when I took up green laning, I had no idea that it was going to lead me to these sort of places. Yeah, like an English heritage place that's um, just hidden away like that down a little trail that you can only walk to or get to on a motorbike. How cool is that? Bit of a scrabble up out the other side when it's all good. Just watch my panniers on these gateposts. There we go. And off we go again. I always love to stop in this bit because it's just with the biggest sky. Not many places you can come and you've got such a lovely sky around you. It's buildings or anything. It's just a real nice spot. So stop here, take a couple of pictures of my beautiful bike with the bluebells. So this is the last little section of the old foss before you hit the M4. This pretty much takes you all the way to Castle Coombe from Campbell. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice old trip. So I've just spotted this little lane. It's called Summer Way. Uh, clearly a road, there's a national speed in that sign. This is not one I've ridden before, so we'll see how it goes. It's part of the national cycle way by the look of it. Uh, let's see where it takes us. And it says it carries on along there. But I am not sure. Let's kind of have a look. We can always turn around. It might just be somebody's house. But oh no, it carries on. Look at that. Ah, these places. Just gorgeous. There we go, carrying on. Then another nice long trail, and we're heading towards Avebury as well. That's good, in the right direction on a trail. Woohoo! Jen's happy. Just pulling into Avebury. Nice, nice and quiet this time of day. Everybody's gone home. So I'm not going to stop at Avebury because I've seen it loads of times and stuff. So I want to just sort of have a mooch around all the back lanes surrounding it and see if we can find any new trails. And uh, it's so nice out here with the uh, countryside. 
And like, Avery carries on all the way up here, stones off to my right. It's huge. So visiting this neck of the woods, it's rude to pass this by. <laughs> so we just had to come and visit uh, Hatpen Hill. See dead ahead of me the uh, white horse down the hill. Look at that yellow field. Oh my goodness me. So bright you can hardly look at it. But yeah, look at that white horse on the hill. And we'll mosey on up and I think I'll have a stop and put a jump on. I've uh, got quite chilly. Uh, although it's sunny, it's quite cold today. And the view up here is just spectacular. So I've got my cosy warm jumper on, so I'm all wrapped up now. I'm about an hour and a half from home. I'm not rushing to get back. What a beautiful evening. I've just seen a sign that says byway. I don't know where it goes. So I'm just have a quick look. Some kind of loops. I wonder if there's a bit of a dead ender or what. Hard to tell. Yeah, I think it just kind of loops around. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't know. It might be interesting though. We're gonna have a look. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> like I said, I'm not in any rush to get home, so we'll, uh, let's go and have a look. <laughs> it's rude not to, in it. <laughs> it might go somewhere. It might go nowhere. Ugh, lots of roots. If you know me well, I don't really like roots. <laughs> All right. Oh, isn't this nice? I guess this this is on some sort of gallops. I always get very nervous riding these new ones. <laughs> Stupidly. I think it's because I ride on my own and you... I mean, this is a nice big, wide, chalky track. There's nothing scary apart from the ruts. I wouldn't want to ride those in the wet, blimey. Um, but lone rider, you never know. But I can't help myself, I'm never so nosy. Sheep, look at the little lambs. Whee! Kind of. Oh wow! There's like a stone circle over there. Let's go have a look. See if this gate's locked or not. Great big lock around it. Oh well, that answers that question, but I don't know if you can see that over there, right in the distance. It's like a. I don't know what it is. Oh, oh well. Is it a stone circle? Or is it just something that somebody's built? I can't figure that out at all. Right the way we came. It was fun. Whee! 
So, I've just had my tea at Burger King. I had to stop, I was getting hungry and I was dying for a pee. <laughs> uh, look, I did done with a couple of painkillers on board. So, uh, Burger King came over the brow of the hill and I thought, oh, you know what? Let's stop and have tea there. So, I'm all fed and watered now. So I've got my tunes on in my ears, I've got my heated gloves on because it's gone right cold. Ready for the last sort of 45 minutes home, I suppose. Which is down by Swindon. Um, so, uh, yeah. Be a nice ride home in the evening sunshine. Trouble with burgers, they don't have to give me heartburn. <laughs> so the fuel reserves just started flashing. I was hoping I was going to make it home, but. I think I'd rather fill up while I can see a garage. So as I ride into the last of the sunset, it is about 10 past 8 in the evening. Um, I think by the time we get home we would have done about 160 miles today. I say I'm feeling pretty good, apart from my shoulder, but that's an ongoing thing anyway. But I have to say, super duper. So that's the excitement for today. I think the next ride... Now, what is coming up? We've got um, Oily Rag next Friday. It's their opening evening for bike night. So if it's sunny, that's where I'll be heading. And Saturday, I think, is... Uh, I don't know what's happening on Saturday, but I know for sure that Sunday is Bike for Life. So, today, if you've enjoyed this video, <laughs> I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, don't forget to like and subscribe and also hit the button for the notifications and then you'll get all the most up-to-date stuff <laughs> that I upload. So, thanks again for joining me today, and I will see you on the next one. Take it easy.